Hello. I hope everybody enjoyed dinner and dessert. Or continuing to enjoy di uh, dessert. As a former LBCC student athlete, head coach, and now current director of athletics, it is truly an honor to be connected to the great history of our institution in this ceremony. Putting on a major event like this is a collective effort that takes a lot of hard work, and I must take a moment to recognize some important groups and individuals. First, I would like to ask everyone who helped plan, coordinate, and set up for this event to please stand and be recognized. I'm going to take a risk here because I work with this person every day. There is an individual that must be recognized separately, as without her this event would not happen. I noticed she's standing up already, that's good. I would like to personally thank the main event coordinator, Christy Lutz, for her tireless dedication to making this event a success. When thinking about this event, uh, it struck me that there's just a lot of great history here and I thought it'd be kind of cool as a tribute of our shared history, I would like to acknowledge a group of individuals who forged a foundation for athletic excellence and who continue the tradition set forth by their predecessors. Could all past and current LBCC coaches, staff, and administrators please stand and be recognized? Finally, I would like any past Hall of Champion inductees in attendance to please stand and be recognized. I think there's a big guy in the back hiding who should probably come out, Neil Ayoga. Neil's been helping with our servers for the past five years in, in uh, serving this great food for us tonight. We have some special guests with us tonight who I would like to introduce individually. Neil, Neil qualifies as one of our special individuals. We can, we can introduce him individually. Uh, not with us currently, but an elected official that was here during the reception who made his way over to the volleyball match that was happening tonight. Uh, Vice President of the Board of Trustees, Jeff Kellogg, was here in, in representation. Two members of our executive leadership team uh, are here, and one of which I uh, introduced earlier, Dr. Greg Peterson. Our executive director of the foundation, Elizabeth McCann. Also with us tonight, uh, an avid supporter of all things LBCC, a personal friend of mine, and our current Academic Senate President, Karen Kane. The Viking family lost a pillar recently, and I would like to take a moment to honor him. This past August, the LBCC Athletics family lost one of our greats, Coach Monty Niskowski. Truly a legend in the aquatics world community, Monty led the Vikings to 32 water polo conference championships and six state championships over a 34 year career at Long Beach City College. Monty was inducted into numerous Hall of Fames and into our LBCC Hall of Champions in 2003. Let's take a brief moment of silence in his honor.
Thank you. Thousands of athletes and scores of coaches have passed through Long Beach City College since 1927. The eight inductees in the class of 2016 tonight are among our most honored Vikings. They have distinguished themselves and brought great pride to their families, their community, and those of us here at LBCC. The Hall of Champions is a great way to help us remember and honor the past, while at the same time instill in our current Vikings a greater pride of this outstanding institution. To present this year's class of inductees, I am thrilled to introduce two legendary Viking coaches and co-chairs of the Hall of Champions Committee, Ron Alice and Jim Murphy. Please come to the stage. First of all, uh, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to introduce some people here tonight that, I, that have uh, established such a tremendous impact on, on the history of the sport that I love so much, and that being track and field. The first honoree is Ryan Bridgewater. Okay. He's here at Long Beach City College in 89 and, and 90. Well, let's say what distinguishes him from some of the others. I'm going to make a statement. He is the best all-around sprinter ever in the history of Long Beach City College. And, And since track was initiated in 1928, that's pretty significant, okay? Um, he's a very quiet-spoken young man, came out of L.A. Washington High School, and he always performed at the highest level when it counted. The records, and all you have to do if you look in your program, are unbelievable, and they still stand to this day. As you can see, he's a school record holder in both sprints. He was a California State champion. He was all-conference, all-state, and an all-American. He still, to this day, is a Southern California record holder. And after, in between his freshman and sophomore years, he represented the United States in the Junior Pan American Games, came back with three gold medals. Then he, pretty good. He then matriculated to the NC2A level. He was NC2A champion in both the 100 and 200. Still to this day holds the NC2A record at 200 meters. And then if you think about it a little bit, he participated in three Olympic trials. And if you know that comes every four years. So 92, 96, 98 is pretty significant in the length of his career. As I said before, and you can see what he did in the world championships and so forth, the best all-around competitive sprinter in the history of this institution, Brian Bridgewater. If you come forward, our inductee for 2016. We have a representative of uh, the uh, track and field program here at Long Beach City College, Raymond Lewis. He went to Paramount High School and uh, currently going through an education to be a registered nurse, and he's a chaperoning and bringing up each one of our recipients. I give you again, Brian Bridgewater. Well, when I was coming out of high school from Washington, um, Washington Prep in LA, I was one of the top sprinters in the nation. And when I didn't pass the SAT, 
I didn't want to go to junior college. So I think when, Ron, when Coach Alice found out I didn't pass the SAT, so he started um, recruiting me. And I decided to come to Long Beach City College, gave me a second chance. And I'm glad I came here. And, it was, and, and I didn't give up. So I never gave up of the opportunity. So I thank, I thank Coach Alice and Coach Richardson for a second chance. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name's Jim Murphy, and I've been around here since 1960 as a player, athlete, and uh, I've been part of the f f football staff and was a wrestling coach here, and it's my greatest honor tonight to honor these inductees. Uh, the inductees and the previous inductees should be outstandingly proud of themselves because this school is one of the top athletic schools besides academic schools in the entire United States. So you should be very proud of yourself. It is, my, it is a rare opportunity to present a young man. He's not young anymore, but, but uh, at the same time, he has, he has this long history with this school of any coach, athlete, or advisor. And so I, he makes me proud because I helped bring him here along with Coach Shaw uh, when he came from Poly High School as a player. We also brought him here as a coach and he, was, he worked with me for many, many years and then took over the defensive coordinatorship at a later, on, later time. Uh, he was a scholar athlete in football, played at Long Beach City College in 1977 through 1978. He was a member of one of the strongest defenses in the entire nation and one of the strongest in the history of Long Beach City College. He played with uh, Coach Shaw's brother and uh, who is also a Hall of uh, Champions inductee. Uh, as a player he was, he was fortunate to be nominated in high school, junior college, and NZ28 to, to all American to the All American teams. Very few athletes have that opportunity, and Michael is very deserving of that. Um, from 1986 to 2005, he was an assistant coach in football, and he serves the defensive coordinator from 1993 to year 2005, winning many championships during that period of time. Uh, what I think is also important besides his athletic endeavors here and what he did as a player and as a coach is the fact that he was, one of, he was the founding advisor to a program that the school calls the Student Success Program for Athletes and it is now continued after he's retired from that position. But he did that position admirably for quite a few years. He's an Arizona State graduate who showed great promises to be a pro athlete. However, unfortunately, he shattered his ankle and his career was over. Um, Mike is 
belovedly named The Blade by his teammates. And for his prowess as a hitter, as a player, he's probably one of 12 players in the history of Long Beach City College that the football program inducts, uh, not annually, but rarely. He's a member of what we call the Hitters Hall of Fame. And he was, when, they, when he hit somebody, they stayed down <laughs> and such. Um, I think this, when I t think of Mike, I think of great athlete, great coach, great scholar, and a great student athlete advisor, and most importantly, an outstanding person. And I think that's the biggest thing in life as you can go down and you go to your grave, you think about how outstanding that person was as a human being, and Mike is one of the best. It is, it's my greatest pleasure to introduce Mike Maloney as inductee to the 15th uh, Hall of Champions. And he is going to be uh, escorted by a young man by the name of Cody Lout, who is a freshman defensive lineman from Lakewood, California, who has set standards for academic for the top rated Viking football team. He has played in four games and recorded three tackles and provided solid leadership on and off the gridiron. Now I present to you Mike Maloney. Thank you so much. You bet. Absolutely. Always, Michael. Always. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what a tremendous honor. Uh, first, thank you to the selection committee. This is great. Cody Lout just walked me up here. Cody's dad and I coached together at Long Beach City College. We actually lived together in the late 70s. Actually, it was the late 80s when I went back to Long Beach State to take some classes. And his dad and I were roommates. So he's, I have never met him before today. I, I, but his dad and I are very close. So thank you so much, Cody. This is a great honor. Um, I'm going to apologize right now because there's no way I can be as brief as Brian Bridgewater was. So I'm going to borrow some of Brian's time because I need to acknowledge some people who were really instrumental in the success I enjoyed as a player and as a coach. Uh, and I probably have to put my glasses on too because you know how it is when we get older. I had, I'm not, it's not a speech, no teleprompters. It's kind of like politics now, I'm just going to deal with some talking points. And I can't say which side. I'm represented here tonight by a great group of family and friends. At table number 10, my mother, mom, raise your hand, Carol Maloney. My ex-wife, Patricia, my daughter, Candace Maloney, her husband, Stephen, my best friend forever since the fifth grade, I mean, since kindergarten. We were five years old, John Dameron, his wife, Doreen, my sister, Pamela. Going to the next table, my sister, Susan, her husband, Marty, uh, and, and one of their children, Eric and Justine, and my brother, Perry. Okay. And it, a bunch of friends, I can't even mention all the friends here, uh, but they've all been very, very instrumental in providing the support that's allowed me to be here tonight. Um, I love all you guys dearly. I'm going to talk more about my mom and dad in a little bit. My daughter, you mean everything to me. You're my pride and my joy ever since the day you were born. John, my best friend for life. Perry, my brother, man, we used to, we grew up in the same room. He's two and a half years older than me. We played tackle football. It always started slow motion. But I, we put some holes in the plaster. And he has been there my entire life to support me. When I went to Arizona State, he moved his butt to Arizona, and he loved it out there. And I love you, bro. You've been there for me my whole life. So these have, this has been my support system. And I think it's really 
important that all of us, especially as athletes, have a support system. Our coaches, our peers, and our parents. They are very instrumental in what we become. You know, my life has revolved around Long Beach City College. Murph said I graduated from Long Beach Poly. I went to school at Oklahoma State. It wasn't the right fit. I had a knee injury, had surgery. Came back to Long Beach City College in 1977 and 1978. Uh, two great mentors and coaches. Um, Marty Shaughnessy was the head coach, but the guys that I really that really took it to me and, and really hit home with me in my heart were Will Shaw and Jim Murphy. Okay, and they've been institutions here at this college. Will is, he still is, but at that time he was bigger than life and you didn't mess with Will Shaw, okay? But he taught us what, what, the way to act, the way it was right. Murph was the bulldog, but he loved every one of us and he made sure that he knew that you knew that he loved us and did all he could to make you successful. And then I had the opportunity to come back and coach. Will Shaw was the head coach and brought me back here in 1986. And I've been here ever since. I've worked as a coach, as an instructor in the kinesiology program, as the student athlete success coordinator. And then now I'm just finishing up. I'm not, I, more if it was 2009, I coached still, but, but it was, it's okay. 2009, I retired from coaching, or, and then now I'm just uh, teaching classes. My football career here was, was really fun. I'm being inducted as a player and as a coach. I transferred back here in 1977. Actually, it was the, the spring semester of 77. I played 77 and 78, had a great time reconnected with several players I played with at Poly. We had a great group of guys. We didn't win league championships, but we were very, very competitive, and it was a super experience. And we learned a lot from our coaches. I was able to transfer and tonight to Arizona State University, where I played in 1979 and 80. And then from there, I kind of kicked around with several different franchises trying to get on in the NFL or the USFL. Injuries ended my career. But I was very fortunate. I never planned on getting in coaching. I didn't know if I was going to go into business. I did this, I did that. As I was a pre-med major when I started college, I was kind of lost. And then after I was released in the spring of 1984 by the Chicago Blitz, Jim Barnett ran into me. Who, he, Jim Barnett was the head coach of the Long Beach Poly High School football team. And Jim said, hey, I got a great group of DBs. You know, we don't have anybody in spring practice. Why don't you come over and coach these guys? Well, the, this was Mark Carrier, Eugene Burkhalter. I mean, we had guys that NFL players, and they were really good. But they needed some direction. And I really enjoyed coaching them in spring football. His defensive coordinator was Jerry Jaso. These were two very, very influential people in my coaching career, okay? I was, a, I was very, very lucky in my career. I played for coaches, Coach Shaw, Coach Murphy, Frank Cush at Arizona State. But to get into high school coaching at Long Beach Poly and coach guys like I coached the first year I was there and really get a chance to talk football with one of the greatest offensive minds that I know of to this day and Jim Barnett, and then Jerry and I, we clicked. Jerry was a great coach, and I brought some ideas, and he let me run with some ideas. But he was really flexible, and we did a great job. We got beat in the semifinals for the CIF championship. The next year, we won the CIF championship. I'll tell you how, how Jerry was. We ran a, an even defense. We ran a 4-3, and we played Fontana, and we switched to a, the Bear, you know, the old 4-6, Buddy Ryan's defense. And we just stuffed them. And the head coach was after the game was like, well, you guys always were in the forefront. What are you doing here? But Jerry was always good at looking at things. And we were able to, and we had players that were very smart. We could get them to adapt. So that was really great. So I uh, really credit Jim Barnett and Jerry Jason when getting me into coaching. In 1986, I came over to Long Beach City College. Will Shaw was a pillar in, in coaches here. We didn't win championships, but he developed young men 
And Jim Murphy, I'm going to tell you something about Murphy. He might have been the bulldog, but he cared about his players more than any coach I've ever coached with. Jim Murphy worked harder than anybody I've ever been with to get his player scholarships at the end of the year. Never have I seen man, a man work so tirelessly to push a product as he did his players and all the players on our team. We didn't win championships. We were successful. We had fun. They were a huge influence on my life in coaching. And then we brought in Larry Rivesbig as the head coach. Larry had talked to me about coaching the defensive backs at Long Beach State when he was the head coach there. He came to Long Beach City College. He kept me on the staff. We had tremendous success through the 90s. As everyone knows, we won countless conference championships, a national championship. Larry was a huge influence on me. Larry taught me how to organize practice and get the most out of every single minute of your practice. After Larry stepped down, we brought Jerry Jaso back in. And we had a, a, an incredible time when Jerry was a coach, one championship or two then. So as you can see, coaches have been very important in my life. My friends have been very important. But probably the two most important people in my life were my parents. My mom, who's here with me today, and my father, who I wish were here. He's in very poor health and could not be here tonight. They've been honored many times by the Long Beach Century Club for their support of Long Beach athletics. They were honored here at Long Beach City College in 2009 in our golf tournament. They were our honorees. Uh, great people. I can remember my dad, an hour lunch break when I was playing Kiwanis T-shirt league. And I'd see his truck sitting out in the outfield at Hamilton Bowl, him eating lunch and trying to catch a part of my game. My mom driving us, we'd have two or three baseball games in one day, Police League, American Legion, Connie Mack. And my mom driving us and us changing uniforms. But the uniforms were always clean. My dad always made sure, even if he had to paint on the side, that we had cleats on our feet and brand new gloves in baseball. I really wish my father was here. I, I love my parents, and I love Long Beach City College. Thank you. Michael. Sorry about that. Let's get a picture. I'm, I'm sorry, I got a little emotional. Yeah, thank you. As you can see, the meaning of what this is in an institution has had so much impact on the lives of so many. And I'm about to introduce somebody who is uh, very, very special, like all of the inductees tonight. But um, before I get started, I'm going to have him stand up and, and come over here and stand. So Francis O'Neill, Hall of Fame inductee for 2016, come on over here and let me give you some insight into this young man. Um, first of all, um, he probably is, and I made some comments about uh, Bridgewater being who he has as his impact on the sport. This young man um, was a 409 miler in high school, and um, he didn't know where he was going to go to school. Um, this table right here is responsible for my recruiting powerhouse. If it weren't for that table, his best friend, I recruited his best friend and his mother. That's how Francis ended up at Long Beach City College. He came from San Pasquale High School in San Diego. 
And uh, he came to Long Beach City College because running was a sidelight. He'd rather surf and he'd rather play volleyball. And he wasn't going to find that in some other places. So that helped started something. With him coming, others followed. He was the guy that pied piped and brought some unbelievable talent into the distance core here at Long Beach City College. His brother also came too and ran here in 94. He went from being a miler in high school to being one of America's best steeplechasers. I'm gonna read, and I hope you too look at your program, what he ran while he was here. Okay, uh, he's a school record holder in three events. 1,500 meters, 345, that's just over four minutes for a mile, okay? Equivalency. Also has a 3,000 meter record at 817. And then, as I just mentioned, he became one of America's best steeplechasers. And I'll tell you how that happened. At the end of a cross country season, the end of, towards the end of the fall, I'd always have a little distance pentathlon and I'd give awards away and so forth and so on. And um, we were running this steeple and I only run a mile when they normally run 3,000 meters. Constantly on the roads when we go on road runs, he was always jumping over fire hydrants, anything, bushes, whatever it was. He enjoyed that. Running was fun. And as a result, um, we were running this little one mile steeple, never ran it in his life. He came by where I was giving time splits and he tripped. Went head over heels, rolled right back up into a stride and kept going. At the conclusion of that, I told him, I have a new event for you. <laughs> and as a result, as you can see by the picture, and he just indicated to me that that was his first full steeplechase. I might add that he still holds not only the school records in all three of those, but he was an All-American. He's still a Southern Cal record holder. And the thing that where you get down below where it talks about his post-collegiate career, he represented the United States as a steeplechaser in the Pan American Games and got the silver medal. And then finished his career as one of the top steeplechasers in America. Now, if you look at the school record here at 839 for a steeple, that will last as long as I mentioned about Bridgewater's accomplishments. That is unbelievable at this level. Now, the other thing that's significant, and I said that when he came here, he brought people with him uh, by just spreading the word, and everybody wanted to be a part of the team that he was on. I told you the track started here in 1927-28. No cross-country team at Long Beach City College has ever won a state title except he and some others sitting at this table. And not only did they win their, the first state championship ever in the history of this school, no one has ever performed as a team like they did. To give you a little idea, those of you who pick up a, a Viking newspaper, I even had the editor and current advisor, teacher, professor at Long Beach City College took 12 units to be a part of that group. And we have reunions every 10 years. They not only set a record, but on one of the toughest courses in the state, all Hill and Dale, and they beat the team that was favored to win, that was filled with considerably number of international athletes. In fact, there is a picture of he and a gentleman who won the Olympic Games in the steeplechase, and they battled all the way to the tape. That's how good Francis O'Neill was. And like I said before, if it weren't for surfing and volleyball, 
you'd not see him standing up here. Again, inductee into the Hall of Fame in 2016, Francis O'Neill.